Hello and welcome to the Petticoated Swashbuckler. My name is Maren and today we're going to make a dress. So I'm making uh, the wardrobe of um, an 1830s Norwegian chambermaid. Uh, and I thought, I, I have two big things that I want to make. I want to make a dress and I want to make a bed gown. For the dress, I want that to be something that she might have inherited from her employers uh, at the point where it wasn't fashionable anymore, where she might not have, uh, you know, wanted... Like, the, the, the family she works for has um, a sort of mistress of the house. She might have felt like this dress didn't work for anymore, it wasn't fashionable anymore, uh, and kind of have gifted it on to her servants as a way of keeping her servants fairly well dressed and also, you know, without having to spend money on new clothes for your servants. So I have this beautiful fabric here. Ooh. This one, this is a cotton. It is a sort of beige light browny colour um, with little uh, block printed little red flowers on it. It's, I mean it's probably not block print but it's made to resemble block print and it does so quite well. Um, it's 100% cotton. Uh, now cotton in Norway has um, not that long of a history as it has in England for example or the States. Uh, cotton was actually more or less illegal to uh, bring into the country up until the 18, mid-1810s, so 1813, 1814. Um, that doesn't mean it didn't happen, it doesn't mean that people didn't have cotton, it just means that it was, um, well, less common than linen or wool, which you can grow in Norway. Norway's climate is very ill-suited to growing cotton, but linen and wool, it's fine. Um, but as this is something a woman of, of means has, has had and has worn, I think it's fine. It's not exactly a glazed cotton, but it's, it's got a little bit of shine to it, as you might see in the, in the light from my window over here. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's not half bad. I think, I think it'll be good. I think it'll look like a, a dress that was once fancy. Now, I... I've been thinking a lot about the style. Um, I made a dress over the Christmas holidays, actually, uh, that was uh, from a black snails pattern. If you don't know black snails, she makes amazing patterns. Uh, you can look her up on Etsy, for example. Um, and she has a pattern for an, an evening dress. And the style is from between 1810 and 1815. And it's a really, really pretty dress. It had really gorgeous leaves. I made it in red velvet. I, I actually used the um, velvet that I... I realised when I was making my, my Tudor gown that I didn't... Uh, I, I had more velvet than I really needed. So I I, re I decided to like use some of it and make a fun little Regency Christmas outfit. Um, and I loved working with that pattern. It was a really nice pattern. I felt like it suited me really well. I felt really pretty and really cute in it. And I thought it'd be interesting to take that pattern and make that dress with long sleeves instead of short sleeves and without maybe without the decorations on the hem. Well, something that would be fun to do would be to make kind of make a nine uh, sorry, an eighteen fifteen dress, but then instead of like making it 1815, I will take all the elements and repurpose them uh, to make the dress more 1820s, 1830s instead. So instead of adding a flounce to the hem, perhaps use that fabric to make a wider waistband, for example. Um, instead of short sleeves, I'll have long sleeves. Uh, I won't have as much trim. I also think the um, the dress I made for Christmas has back opening um i think i'm going to try and make it front opening instead because that's so much more handy <laughs> for me uh when i'm playing a working character 
um, and also feels like something you would do. You know, you would turn your dress. Your dress is probably more stained, more worn in the front. If you can, you will turn it and you will, um, you know, perhaps you will use the back as your new front piece or perhaps you will just kind of maybe it's, it needs taking in or out so you'll add a new opening so first thing I need to do is I'm going to make a mock-up because even though I have made this before I, I used it with another pair of stays uh, the two of the ones I'm going to use for this one so I'm going to I'm going to try uh, I need to try it on over my the stays I'm going to use for this one and uh, it'll also be nice to see how how I can change it for a, with a, with the front opening instead of the back opening. But I am confident enough that I'm going to make my mock up out of some linen scraps and just use those as lining if I'm happy. So that's the plan. Uh, I hope you'll come along with me and my pile of cotton. Let's go. So the first thing I did was to cut out a mock-up or lining. I tried it on, made some adjustments, but very little. I mean, it fits really well. I did do however was I measured where my I wanted my waistband to go how wide I wanted it to be Then I cut everything. I cut my skirt pieces, my waistband, my sleeves, my cuffs and my bodice pieces. I made gathering stitches at the shoulders and the underbust of the front pieces um, and the back pieces. I then stitched uh, the shoulders together. repeating with the lining um, and then I stitched the lining and the fabric right sides together around the front opening and the neckline. I then cut corners, turned and pressed.
I also hand stitched around uh, those uh, sewn edges just to keep the lining in place. I basted around the arm size and I stitched the side seams. Um, the side seams of the lining were already stitched. However, for the fabric, I uh, folded a seam allowance uh, on uh, one piece over the raw edges of the other and then stitch through all layers. I then attached the waistband and pressed all seam allowances down. And then it's time to try it on! Uh, with petticoat, uh, making sure to mark the waistline because it's not going to be even all the way around. Our waists tend to move up a little bit at our sides and then down a little bit at our front and back. Taking it off again, I'm trimming up that line. and cutting it Next I moved on to my sleeves I marked where I wanted my slits to go And then I stitched the sleeves together and made the, some gathering at the sleeve heads.
I hem the sleeve slits by hand. Uh, my goal with this dress was that every seam you could see should be hand finished, so no visible uh, machine seams on the outside. Press the sleeves. Stitch on the cuffs. And the cuffs as well I finished by hand. I then made some lacing holes for closing the sleeves. Press again. Then I opened the basting around the arm size. And stitch the sleeves, but only to the outer fabric. Uh, gathering the sleeves to fit. Then what I did is I folded the lining over the raw edges and hand stitched that in place. With the bodies done, it's time for the skirt. I'm using three panels, start by stitching those together, make the front slit
the pocket slits. And then lay the seams and press. The skirt I are hemmed by hand. I used um, some bias tape that I stitched on by machine and then re-stitched on by hand. Then you, I gathered the skirts to fit the waistband. Pressing all of the seam allowances up towards the waistband, um, it's now ready to be lined. I'm doing that by hand. Final, trying on, just making sure everything's where it should be, uh, marking where I want my closure to be. Marking my hem, it's a little long, so I ended up making a couple of pin tucks uh, along the hem just to make sure that I didn't kind of trip over my skirts. This is also very historically accurate as skirts in the 1830s were shorter fashionably than skirts of the 1815 to 1820s.
Then attaching the hooks and eyes, or in some cases thread bars and eyes. My dress is ready to take uh, on a little spin. <laughs>